Welcome to the Let's K-12 Better podcast. This podcast is a project between Mom of All Capes and her kids. Hi! In our podcast, we will cover a variety of subjects involving K-12 education and family life. We will talk about the ways that parents, kids, and educators can improve K-12 education and family life. We encourage you to join our conversation on social media using the hashtag Let's K-12 Better. Let's jump into episode 14 of the Let's K-12 Better podcast. Right now, families across the country are inundated with information about COVID-19 and back to school. Some of it good and some of it misleading. It's hard to keep up with the decisions being made by each state and every school district in response to the recommendations from health officials. The reality is that school, although not a child care facility, provides parents the ability to work as schools promise a structured and safe environment for kids. As we hear about the demands to jumpstart the economy and the real need for families to earn income, we can't help but wonder if there isn't a better, more imaginative way that we aren't pursuing. This episode is part of a back to school series focused on a variety of topics designed to peek behind the curtain or even blur the lines a bit between the parent teacher realm. We hope that you gain insight into the human stories behind the hysteria, the confusion, and even the sterile numbers and factoids we hear in the media. So what do the kids think? This week, we sat down as a family to have a candid discussion about COVID-19 and its impact on the back-to-school experience. We are excited to note that we asked friends in the state of New York some similar questions to see what they had to say. We hope these conversations inspire you to keep having your own discussions with your own kids. All right, um, so let's jump in here. What concerns you about starting school and COVID-19? Um, I think what concerns me the most is that um, probably we're not going back to school for a while. But if we were, we'd probably have to like, we'd all get have to get vaccinated or something because um, cause there's a lot of people at our school, so maybe like we're gonna have each person like thinked individually. What's L- thinked? I mean, um, tested, t- tested for it. So then at the school, not at the school, maybe at the school, so like they know. So maybe that kid won't go to school. Also, if one person has it, mm-hmm. it can, and the second wave is probably going to, there's probably going to be a second wave, and if it comes, then it's probably going to come to the school, and like, it's- Why would it come to the school? Because there are a lot of kids there, and like, kids are the most people who are probably going to get it. Mm, okay. And- Do you mean carriers? Like, yes. You mean carriers? And, um, and- what makes you think that kids would be carriers? Because, because they're disgusting. Speaking of my Because a lot of kids, like, go around doing stuff more than adults do because adults are more, like, careful because kids are, like, just, like, not dumb, but, like, they don't have a lot of experiences because, I mean, they're kids and they haven't lived that long. Mm. Excuse me? Um, okay. I wanted to add on to that. Nice and loud, please. Like, not, it's not just kids are carriers. Kids also, like, I think it's more like lower grade elementary schoolers because they're really little. They don't really know a lot. So, like, they'll be, like, going around, rolling in the mud. They'll just be, like, hanging out, having fun. But, like, like from third grade on, you're more cautious because you know, you probably know what's going to 
happen if you get what sick or what you? happens if you bring the sickness to someone else. So younger kids, there's like, a chance that they're not going to be as uh, cognizant or aware or careful because they're just being their carefree also, selves. Yeah, and then and also, also, um, can I? So, like, as I said, like, if the second wave mixes with coronavirus, maybe it's going to be something new or the same thing. So you think that it's the virus could powerful. potentially mutate? Yeah, it's going to probably be more powerful and more effective wow. on adults and kids. Okay, that's a great point. I want to say that before I was scared because I thought there was going to be public school. I was like, how is every child going to go? Because at my school, there's a lot of kids, so they would either all have to wear masks, and there's not going to be enough teachers to enforce that everyone has to wear a mask at all times. And if they were to do something like there's social distancing in classrooms, it wouldn't work out because there's too many, there's not enough classrooms. And, and yeah, and but now I'm not scared because we're mostly at home now. So Okay. What are some back to school traditions that you'll miss this year? Like things that we do all the time. Um, well, every year I have a personal tradition. I buy like I go like our parents take us to um, shoe stores and I buy red vans every year, red and black vans. Um, and also we go like every time we're at the mall, it's more of a like just a normal tradition, like not just back to school, but we always end up getting like cinnamon sugar pretzels that's cool um i think a tradition we do is that we might not get to do it this year is we usually just like get a bunch of school supplies um and new um clothes and shoes like she said we get a bunch of no- new stuff so unless like the other person passes on some clothes some old clothes that they had that school year. So everybody Before. gets to look fresh on the first day, huh? Fresh. Oh, yeah. Fresh. What about you? Do you have anything? Okay. So we already said it. So. Oh. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. All right. Cool. Okay. So during a normal back to school experience, right, um, what would you most likely be excited about? What would get you like, yay, back to school? Getting my hair straightened. So, like, you, so you like getting your hair done? Yeah. Every single year, my mom takes me to go. Awesome. Um. I think that I'm usually just worked up about, like, seeing everyone, my new classmates, my old classmates, just in the same room. And, like, from, like, usually three months of summer break, going to the pool and stuff, um, I'm usually just happy to be back and learning again. Wow. Okay, cool. And mostly doing math, because that's my favorite subject. That's your favorite subject? Math is? Cool. Don't think I'm weird for this, but I like the smell of, like, new stuff. Like, I get excited when we buy new clothes or shoes or, like, school supplies because, like, it smells like, like, um, I don't know how to describe it. It just smells good. <laughs> it smells like a new beginning. <laughs> a new beginning. That should be, okay. that should be a scent. Febreze, pick it up. New beginning. <laughs> new beginning. Air freshener. Back to school. Okay. Uh, you could get it every back to school, spray it in Seriously, your Seriously, like, I would buy that for you guys and spray it around the house so that you could feel good I about could, the school. I could, it year. would okay. smell good all year. <laughs> we took a moment to ask our friends in New York, Levi and Judah, these same questions. Here's what they had to say. You'll hear their mom, Lindsay, in the background. Hi, I'm Levi, and I am nine years old. For how long? Uh... For one month. One more month. Yes. Hi, I'm Judah, and I'm 11 years old. For how much longer? Um, um let me check. 10 days, something. Hey, guys, first of all, like, y'all are so super dope. Thank you very much for your time this uh, evening. I really, really appreciate you guys. What's your biggest concern about starting school with COVID-19? Um, I'm really concerned about... um. Probably getting COVID-19 or spreading it to anyone else. I'm probably most concerned about just um, being, like, the person who spreads it to other people. You guys are super thoughtful, so I just want to throw that out there. That I appreciate you guys for that. That's, like, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, not Thank amazing you. that that's your concern. Yo, you're welcome. Not amazing that that's your concern, but 
I think you guys are amazing people for that being your concern. Okay, so first let me ask, like, are y'all virtual? Are you guys face-to-face? Are you guys, y'all don't know? Are you half and half? You know what school's going to be like this fall? Um, maybe just, like, probably, um, just work from home, like, how we've been doing it for, like, the maybe first three months. Do you know, Judah? Um, how it will be for us? Yeah. Um, I think that there will be some days where some people go to school and some people don't. And, um, that way there's not so many people in, like, a class. So then, um, when people, like, don't have the risk of, like, spreading it or getting it. Do you think that they're going to give you a choice about if you want to go or not? Probably. Yeah. Because what, what choice would you make if they gave you the choice? I would probably not because I think I'm fine with how it's now. And I don't want to, like, risk getting it. So you're fine. Um, you're fine. Be, you're fine doing what we're doing now. Yes. But no, I'm not fine going to school because I feel like this. Uh, because I wouldn't just want, I wouldn't want to do it until there's like a vaccine or something to stop. It. Yeah. Why? What makes? What do you think about? Like how? What do you think about? About going back to school? Like if you went with before there was a vaccine, how would you feel when you were in school? I wouldn't always feel like safe. I just, I would be, like, sort of scared when I came back, like, home. What would you be scared of? Of me actually, like, getting it and spreading it to other people. Yeah. What would happen if you spread it to other people? What would you be afraid of? Of just afraid of anything that could happen from it. Yeah. Like, what What do you know about could happen from it? I don't know that much. I know it's deadly. Yeah. But I don't know that much about it, no. I appreciate all of that. So in considering all of that both of you guys said, right, um, my next question to you would be like, if you, if, and I guess you are in virtual spaces, you guys are going to be in a virtual learning environment, like you're missing out on a few things, right? So like, what are some back to school traditions or things you guys do or look forward to, right, that you're going to miss this year? What do we do to get ready for school? We have school supplies. Um, the morning of school, we take the picture. And yeah, and dad usually works from home and we see you guys on the porch. And since I'm going to fifth grade, um, there's something I saw in the yearbook. Uh, every every single year, the fifth graders always hold up like a sign, uh, like uh, last uh, first day fifth grade last day of SIS you know are there any bummers you know so like it's not going to be normal you know are there any bummers and if there are any bummers right I know my kids are feeling some you know what are some ways that you're dealing with the bummers like oh man that sucks um just I'm not gonna be able to see my friends well I might be able to but like just not like Face to, like, yeah, in person, not face to face. Like, what are some things that you think that you can do um, to feel okay about it? Fortnite, like talking to them. Or I could um, talk to them through Fortnite and Minecraft and Roblox and um, all those other games, even though those are the only three games that I actually like. A, like my favorite games um a bummer i think is probably when i go to school if um if what i think we're going to do in school is going to happen it is that like half the days um we are there and half the days we're not there um what i like what would be a bummer would be that um maybe i wouldn't be in like i wouldn't be in the days that my friends are going to be at school how else could you connect with them? Like, what are other I'll ways to talk them? to them? I talk to them on, like, calling them. I can talk to them on, like, on a video game. I can talk, to, like, I can FaceTime them. I can do any of that. <laughs> Levi and Duda, you guys are really awesome. And I just want to thank you guys.
so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. We hope that you enjoyed part one of this two-part episode. We challenge families to have an open discussion about COVID-19 and your back-to-school plans. Are you able to give your kids a bit of agency in deciding what to do? How will your district's choice impact education and your family wellness? If you have anything that you'd like to share, please connect with us on social media at Let's K-12 Better on all social media platforms. Or you can connect with me on Twitter and Instagram at Mom of All Capes. Check out part two of this discussion available right away. We'll see you in part two. Welcome back to part two of this back to school episode discussing COVID-19 with kids on the Let's K-12 Better podcast. We appreciate the insight that Judah and Levi shared with us in part one. Now let's jump right back into our family discussion. In part one of this two-part episode, we discussed what concerns us most, our back-to-school traditions, and also what excites us about the back-to-school season. We hope that you enjoy the second half of this discussion. What are your hopes um, for the upcoming school year, right? Our district has decided that we are going to be virtual through the first semester, right? So what do you hope for this school year? I hope that um, um, I get the gist of sixth grade because I just got to sixth grade and I finished fifth grade in um, COVID-19. So I kind of am like got the gist of fifth grade, but. Sixth grade is going to be confusing. Okay, cool. What do you What do you hope? I hope that um that for the first semester, I hope that like we still get to know who the teacher is and like our classmates new old and also um like I didn't get the full third grade experience because we're supposed to go to the zoo. So I hope that this year we actually get the whole experience the whole experience even though it's probably gonna be virtual still some still some fun things i see that okay how about you what do you hope hope that we get to go back into the building at least once before the end of the school year Yeah. yeah yeah all right so we know that our school is going to be virtual right period like For the whole first semester. So do you think that school will be effective while it's virtual? You know, why or why not? I think maybe it might be effective, but it's probably not going to be like the whole experience for the first semester. But I think that maybe it'll at least still will learn Mm -hmm. some things. Maybe on the first semester, the teacher's probably just going to review from the last grade, but I f- still hope that we learn th- things that are new. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to be effective because we have our parents at home, and I feel like our parents are going to just help you more than just leave you, like, at school. Like, I mean, they're not going to just leave you. Like, the teacher doesn't come ar- Like, say you're working, and the teacher, you raise your hand, but there's, like, other six other people raising their hand. Like, it's going to be faster for you to learn with your parents than with your teacher. What about people whose parents are super busy with work or who who aren't micro like not micromanaging but aren't multitasking to ensure that they're working and helping their kids with school. Like I'll say as a, as your mom, like it was hard for me to like 
still do my job hopefully well we'll see what my boss says and (laughs) (laughs) and also like help you guys you know in the midst of like making sure that my professional life was professional and up to the level that it's supposed to be at so like you know what do you like what do you think scratch that (laughs) <laughs> this is not a no, movement. I mean, it's the movement. I mean, we're on the hunt. Like, <laughs> also at the same time, though, like, I, I know there's, like, hmm, there's not going to be more as much students asking the teacher. Like, for example, like at school, there that's the only grown up there. But at home, there's I know there's going to be at least like two parents. Come on, or some people don't have two parents. We no, don't I have mean, two. No, I mean like two children who have parents. Who are going to help them. Or okay, siblings. so what do you think about, like, the learning that you're going to receive, right? Is it going to be effective? No. Why not? Because I feel like um, the last month or two, the whole last, when we went into coronavirus, um, I feel like the first time that we were, like, learning stuff, it was hard for the teachers to connect with the students mm-hmm. because we weren't at school to say, oh, yeah, at home we have this knows kind of like if you don't have something how are you going to connect how are you going to connect if you don't have it so like right so connecting with students the way that we currently teach is a challenge for virtual Um, okay okay just want to make sure um also um wait hold on she's next and then you're after her because we want to be fair um for me i also don't think it's going to be very effective because it's not just a matter of you can connect with students. It's also if the student is trying to connect with you. Well, my teacher, like, she was, like, helping us, like, learn, like, get the gist of COVID-19 um, virtual learning. But, like, the kids, like, some of the kids in my class were, like, trying to, like, do something else. Right. So I mean. there's so being at home can pose a distraction on a virtual platform. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Um, can I, I want to add on to what Garvey said. She said, like, um, some kids don't have the resources. Like, I was doing this video that, um, my teacher sent sent us on the website that we use, and, like, I didn't have all the materials that they needed, but, like, I kind of just, like, um, used what I had. For example, like, the lady in the video said you need clay to separate the pieces for the fractions where I didn't have clay so I just used Legos Mm -hmm. so it's virtual learning is going to pose some interesting challenges where people have to be creative about because usually the teacher gives you the resources yeah true right if you could stay home virtually all year would you why or why not um I wouldn't um because one, you would really, really miss your teacher, even though you'll see her, but you won't really see her see her. you just see her on the screen. And also, your friend's the same, but also, um, it would take up a lot of electricity because, think about it, a whole year is 365 days, and a school year is, we start on... It's like 180 days. Yeah, 180 days. Maybe so, more, maybe yeah. less. Cause you'd have to be on that for a hundred on the electricity for a hundred eighty days, and I mean like that would be a lot, and like you you'd be on your screens for a hundred eighty days. Mm. I mean we're mostly on our screens every day, but like you'd be even though you'd be learning, mm-hmm. still, I mean the average person shouldn't be on there, like. Just under, straight on your screen just all the time. Straight, because yeah. like sometimes, um, our, my parents, our parents restrict us, like when we're using it too much. Mm-hmm. Um, sh- they tell us just like chill out or like play a game, because mm-hmm. like that or do something creative or with your family. Um, yeah. Um, I think it would save a lot of money on a lot of stuff, like clothes and shoes. Because if we're not going anywhere, mm-hmm. if we're not going anywhere, then why would we need to buy it? So, I mean, it would save a lot of money for families with clothes and shoes. And I would also think 
that school supplies you'd still have to buy a few things but not as much things as like before Mm -hmm. so like maybe like pencils and paper and stuff like that but like not like random stuff you'd need not like just like a bunch of clothes you could just weigh it on clothes I don't want to go Speaking back. Speaking to the mic. I don't want to go back to school for two reasons. One, because my grade has to be at the top floor, and I have to go down for things like lunch, and stuff. And two, because um, what like like they said, it'll cut expenses. But also, um, I kind of do want to go back to school, even though it's COVID nineteen. Like that's the part I want to stay inside. But like I feel like. This is kind of piggybacking off of the answer from my last question. Kids are going to get distracted if they have, like, a lot of stuff at home and they're, like, constantly around it. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Recently, we got nervous because you were a little sick, even though we didn't go anywhere since March. (laughs) Like, we didn't go anywhere. You haven't been doing sports. You haven't seen any friends. We don't have, like, a COVID-19 pod with other people. Like, you've been in the house or you've visited your grandmother. And so we went because, you know, we went to go get you tested for COVID because we wanted to make sure that we were being safe and that, you know, make sure I didn't bring anything from the grocery store. So, you know, what was that like for you to go through not the not knowing to then knowing that you were negative for COVID-19? When I didn't know I, that if I had it or not, I was scared because I was like, if I do have coronavirus, then everyone around, around me, especially my grandma, she could have gotten it because she's a older person. And like, those are the people who like most likely die from coronavirus. And I got really scared. Um, and I was also scared because I didn't want to quarantine myself in my room. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Mm. And so then what did you feel when you got the test results back? Relieved. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what about learning from home kind of sucks a little bit? You can't really, like, it's less engaging because, like, you can't really see what the teachers, like, um, it's harder to for the teacher to kind of drive the por- point forward mm-hmm. um, because, like, you're at home, you're, like, just sitting, looking at a screen, or, like, what if your teacher doesn't even have their screen on? Um, or, like, there's some technical difficulties, which has happened before mm-hmm. for me. Um, and it's, like, harder to learn with because, one, the te- technical difficulties, they could be glitching or it could cut off. Um, both of those things have happened to me, and it was, like, really hard to learn. We didn't even, like, be able to, like, listen to the lesson sometimes. hmm um, and so, like, when we went to get go to the, do the assignments, like, we didn't know what to do, or it would be, um, like, it just completely shut off okay. or died. Okay. Um, sometimes what bothered me was not meaning to be mean to my sister, but sometimes, like, my sister would come in the back or my mom would come in the back and just, like, be there, not saying that your existence is bad just saying like um it's a challenge yeah it's kind of a challenge when you have someone else in there like i'm not saying that not trying to be mean to them or rude but like yeah and they would come at the kitchen table and eat and sometimes like i just look at them so like i was trying to focus on class we were virtual this uh last quarter in the spring. So what is something that you've learned from the spring that will help you this fall? Um, how to deal with like technical difficulties and overlapping meetings because there were technical difficulties over the virtual semester. And also like we would, I'd have to get up really early so I could prepare for my meeting so that I wasn't like in the way of um, Sophia while she was. So um, time management and I learned- IT. I learned how to be patient with other classmates and my teacher because sometimes the other classmates would, like, act up. So, like, the whole class had to stop because, like, it's not where, like, we're doing an assignment in class where you have to just write it down and, like, the teacher teaches it to you and you have to, like, do the assignment. We all have to do it together. Um, So I had to be really patient with other kids and my teacher 
also. Um, so it sounds like you learned patience and empathy. Yes. Mm, okay, cool. Well, I'm just going to say that I think you guys have a ton of really important things, and I just want to thank you for sharing your thoughts. We, Bill Coleman. <laughs> thanks. We have a, an, an interesting road ahead of us with virtual learning, and hopefully we can try to be successful. Yep. Hopefully. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for talking to us. No, always. <laughs> good to be back. Yep. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Back, 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 back. Thank you for joining our family discussion. We hope that you enjoyed part two of this two-part episode. We challenge families to have an open discussion about COVID-19 and your back-to-school plans. If you have anything you'd like to share, please connect with us on social media at Let's K-12 Better on all social media platforms. Or connect with me on Twitter and Instagram at Mom of All Capes. We wish you all the best during the back to school season. Each episode, we will share quotes that we find inspirational, and sometimes we will share what we think they mean. Rosa Parks was an American activist in the civil rights movement. Her quote, you must never be fearful about what you are doing when it's right. Florence Nightingale was an English social reformer, statistician, and the founder of modern medicine. Her quote, I attribute my success to this. I never gave or took any excuse. My quote is by James Baldwin, an American novelist, playwright, essayist, poet, and activist. Say it again. Louder. My quote is by James Baldwin, who was an American novelist, playwright, essayist, poet, and activist. My quote is, those who say it can't be done are usually interrupted by others doing it. Eleanor Roosevelt was the longest serving first lady of the United States. She was an American political figure, diplomat, and activist. Her quote, justice cannot be for one side alone. It must be for both. Thank you for listening to the Let's K-12 Better podcast. Please like, subscribe, and share. We want to hear from you. Connect with us on social media at Mom of All Capes Everywhere and follow the Let's K-12 Better podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Share your thoughts about this episode using the hashtag Let's K-12 Better. That's hashtag L-E-T-S-K-1-2-B-E-T-T-E-R. You can now find us on your favorite podcasting app. See you next time. <laughs>